Hi everyone and welcome to Real China. Now let's kick off this week by taking a look at a historical action epic from way back in 2009. It's called The Warrior and the Wolf and it's directed by veteran filmmaker Tian Zhuang Zhuang. He looks like a nice guy. Anyway, although the movie is set in ancient China, it has something of an international cast. Playing the female lead, a sexy tribal widow no less, is exotic American hottie Maggie Q. Looking good, Maggie. Ring-a-ding-ding. Now starring opposite her as a Chinese shepherd turned soldier named Lu is Japanese actor Joe Odagiri. Now the story begins at an army camp on the northern border of China, which keeps various barbarians out of the country. The soldiers only get a chance to head home once a year, when the winter snow begins to fall. I'm pretty sure that song didn't appear in the official soundtrack. Anyway, on the return trip, the soldiers stop off at a tribal village. Lou subsequently marches into the tent of Maggie Q and rapes her in a somewhat explicit scene, which we can't actually show, alas. I don't know who came up with that. Anyway, Maggie soon falls in love with Lou, but she tells him about a terrible curse. If a villager and an outsider ever glaze the donut together, seven days later, they'll both turn into wolves. Not so relevant, but I do like Shakira. Good choice there, for once. Anyway, let's check out the trailer. Oh, 我不想再杀人。Wow, doesn't it look cool, eh? Now, originally, it was supposed to be Tong Wei playing the sexy tribal widow. But after her rather explicit turn in Ang Lee's Lost Caution, which we also can't show, alas, she was actually banned from acting in China. Grim. Still, she's been allowed back on screens now. So the world is jolly once again. <laughs> Next up is our weekly gossip section. Let's go over to our very own Real China gossip girl, Kajin, to find out the latest movie news. So, Kajin. Hey, how's it going? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm great. I've got very exciting news about Jackie Chan for you this week. Go on, Jackie time. Now, his 100th film is coming out this year. It's called 1911. Oh. Epic. 
What's it's it about? Ab it's about the Xinhai Revolution. Oh, Xinhai Revolution. Do you, you know? Well, you've been on Wikipedia. What's it about? No, I haven't. I know Chinese history. Now, Xinhai Revolution brought to an end to the Qing Dynasty. Okay, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, it began with the Wu Chung Uprising. It did. Which was something involving soldiers. Yes. So Jackie, Jackie's starring in this, right? He is directing and producing, taking full control. A bit of an Orson Welles there, but if he's starring, I guess he's going to be playing a soldier, heroic he soldier. No exactly. Less. I have a production still. Mm -hmm. See. You're right. Wow, I've done it again, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen. I don't know why you're even here. Well, that was luck. Okay. Anyway, but also he invited more than 70 celebrities to act in this film. 70, so, eh? 70. Well, don't give us all 70, because that would be quite tedious. Mm. Just give us some of the bigger names. Well, Li Bingbing. Oh, she was the hottie from Detective D. We do like Li Bingbing. Indeed. Joan Chen, very famous actress. She was in The Last Emperor. She was. And also Judge Dredd with Stallone. Yes, very different films. Mm -hmm. And also JC, JC Chen. Oh, is that his, his son, JC? Yeah. How did JC Chen get a role in the film? Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, anyway, don't want to get slapped by Jackie. <laughs> anyway, now Jackie Chen is also the ambassador of the very first Beijing International Film Festival. Wow. So that's very exciting. Oh, uh, can I applaud him? If you want. Well done, Jackie. I okay. mean, yeah, so they're going to showcase more than 100 foreign films and 60 Chinese language films. Okay, Very big which, scale. Uh, do you know which uh, Western films are going to be screened? We have Oscar winners, Black Swan, The Social Network. Well, hold on, those films have mm -hmm. already been released long ago in the West. Why are they being played here for the first time? Well, they haven't been released in Chinese cinemas and also, you know, given that Beijing being the cultural center of China, but having its first international film festival. It's very big. I have to be big honest deal. with you, Cajun. Like, you can find Black Swan and Social Network on pirate DVDs on every corner of every street. I but, know, uh, but it's different with the film festival. It's okay. arty. Well, it's, so. very, it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Jackie is the male ambassador. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you can't have a male ambassador without having a female ambassador. Just look at this show, eh? You've got the male one and the... Um, and of Karen. course. But uh, yeah, so who is the female ambassador? Zhang Ziyi. Surprise, surprise. She is like everything about like Chinese movies to do with the West. Mm -hmm. She is the go-to girl, isn't she? She is indeed. Could we not have like uh, Sun Li? Well, well, she's pretty, but I mean her language, you know, you can I teach, could teach her, her English. English. Yeah, you do. can. Okay, well, well that's what I'm going to do. I'm going off to teach her English. You mm -hmm. can try and get us tickets to the Beijing International Film Festival. I will indeed. Just say my name and you'll get them. Okay, sure. well, say bye-bye then. See you next week. XOXO. Fascinating stuff. Now let's go over to our mini-blog reporter, Zhang Lin. Hi, guys, and welcome to the mini-blog. Hong Kong actors Nicholas Xie and Cecilia Chong have been considered a model couple since their wedding in 2006. Even when Chong was caught up in the Edison Chen photo scandal a few years ago, her husband stood by her. What a guy. Recently, some mini-blogs have released photos of Xie's proposal to Chang, as well as details of the romantic day. It all took place on September 18, 2006, on a tiny island in the Philippines. Xie took Chang down to the beach to enjoy the sunset. Then he got down on one knee, pulled the ring from his pocket, and popped the big question. After a few seconds of shocked silence, Chang finally said yes. That's when Xie set off a whole bunch of fireworks to celebrate the good news. How romantic! Now five years have passed, and it's wonderful to see them both still so in love, and with two very cute young sons as well. Love is simple sometimes. Let's hope everyone can find their own prince or princess in the end. That's all for this week's mini blog. Back to you in the studio, Rob. Great stuff, Jung Lin! Now let's wrap things up this week with a rundown of the top five movies at the Chinese box office. Rounding out the top five is Zhang Yi Bai's romance Eternal Moment, a film sequel to the late 90s TV series about an unfulfilled campus romance. Xu Jing Lei and Li Ya Pong reprise their roles from the original as separated lovers who meet 12 years later. <laughs> At number four this week is Florian Henkel von Donnersmark's romantic thriller, The Tourist. Angelina Jolie stars as a femme fatale who ensnares Johnny Depp's hapless tourist in a game of international intrigue, all set against a gorgeous Vienna backdrop. We know he will be with her. You wish to report a murder. 
attempted murder. That's not so serious. Not when you downgrade it for murder. In third is Michelle Gondry's superhero action comedy, The Green Hornet. Co-writer Seth Rogen stars as Britt Reed, an irresponsible playboy who morphs into a masked crime fighter after his father's murder. Taiwan superstar Jay Cho takes over from Bruce Lee as the Green Hornet sidekick Kato, alongside villain Christopher Waltz and love interest Cameron Diaz. New secretary. Perfect. Red light, stop, stop! The camera got us. Can I shoot one? Just missing out on the top spot is director Li Yu's award-winning drama, Buddha Mountain, starring the delightful Fan Bing Bing alongside Berlin Chen. Fan stars as a rock singer who fails her college entrance exam and has to sing in bars for a living. And finally, Topping the charts this week is Hollywood sci-fi, I Am Number 4. Alex Pettifer stars as John, an alien sent to Earth as a child to escape the invaders who destroyed his home planet. Australian hottie Teresa Palmer adds buckets of glamour as a female alien. Well, I'm afraid that's pretty much all we've got time for this week. But don't be too upset, because Real China will be back bringing you the latest movie news and your favorite regular segments next week. Bye for now.